I've always been a maker in my soul, but before I liked making food, I made other things. I grew up in my workshop building all types of projects, and I even chose that as my career path before I found my passion for cooking. But now I'm getting out of the apartment, I've got a new studio space, and I'm building out the entire thing from scratch, so I get a chance to build again. So the question is, how does this relate to being a pro home cook? Well, number one, I've got a ton of cool projects for this space, and I want to bring you along on that journey. Number two, we all go through times when our life is a little chaotic and filled with a mess, but I don't want to lose my cooking practice. Even though I can't cook as much, I still want to get in the kitchen and cook meals so I can sustain myself while I'm building. So you're going to see really cool meals throughout this entire building process as well. The first project doesn't have anything to do with the kitchen. I need a desk so I can edit these videos first, create an office space, and it's all going to be inspired by this cutting board right here. If you've seen my videos, you know this cutting board. But first, let's take it back to my apartment so we can make some food. So this right here is my current desk setup. I'm using this kneeling chair. I've been using it for about a year. Definitely helps relieve some, some back issues I get from just sitting down on a regular chair. And then I've got this. My dad made me this a few years back. Boom, laptop. So I'm nice and, and level, but it's just a, a little crowded, not to mention things are just fermenting everywhere. I've got, <laughs> this is my storage section now. I've got more kombucha fermenting over there. Not a good look. Now, if I'm tired of sitting and I'm looking for a quick little standing desk option, I take this whole piece, a oh, oh, little heavy one-handed, and I pop it right over here <laughs> on this table. Now I have my rigged up standing desk, not ideal. So for years I've been dreaming about having an official, a more official desk setup. I've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. There's a lot of awesome desk setups out there getting inspired. And I think I've got a really cool idea for the ultimate standing desk. But before I get to the studio to start the project, I'm gonna make a little dish for something to sustain me throughout the process. So right now the studio build out process is taking up most of my brain space. A lot of time, a lot of creativity is dedicated to the space, which is great. It's a fun project, but I definitely need to adapt because a lot of that space used to go to home cooking, to planning meals, to executing, to eating really well throughout the week. So I've had to adapt a bit, but that doesn't mean I, I can't cook awesome food. It just needs to change a bit. It needs to go a little more survival, a little more in the moment. So really it's about just looking in your fridge, seeing what you have and throwing things together, using all of the skills you've had in the past to really make things happen. So for this meal, I'm gonna make a pasta. I was at the farmer's market last weekend and I found some homemade pasta, which I figured would be a few meals really sustaining and hearty and then I just pulled a bunch of veggies out I had some cheese a little bit of meat so this isn't about being uh, you know a perfectly refined pasta it's just getting as many ingredients into this thing that will really sustain me through the day so I had this piece of smoked pork that I thought would work similar to like a pancetta or a bacon, but use whatever you had. I just chopped that up into little pieces and then fried that up in some oil. While that was frying, I chopped up my vegetables. I had a little piece of eggplant, I had some mushrooms, I had a summer squash. And once that was chopped up, I threw that in with the pork as well and just fried that up until it was pretty much al dente. It doesn't need to be cooked completely through because it's gonna cook a little later on. While that was cooking, I chopped up a green onion that I had, the stem of it plus the, the green part. And then I chopped up a little garlic. And then I took out all of those vegetables and replace them with some oil and fried up the green onion and the garlic together. And then I chopped up some cherry tomatoes, which are one of my favorite things for making a quick tomato sauce and threw those in with the bunch and then just started mashing those down to really extract all of the tomato juice out of it to create a sauce. 
At this point, I would add a little bit of wine, but I didn't have any wine, so I added some red wine vinegar, which I did have just a few splashes of that to give it a nice tanginess and to build up the sauce a bit. Since I didn't have that many tomatoes, I don't have a lot of sauce in here, but there's so much flavor with all of the vegetables we're adding, plus we've got some cheese. So what I'm gonna do is cook the pasta really quick and then add a bunch of the pasta water. That will create the thick sauce and then hopefully the vegetables will create the flavor. So right here is the key to pasta. You cook the noodles a little under and it looks like soup right now, but as you continue to stir, the starches from the noodles that come off the noodles will thicken up into a sauce. And this will be creamy. Plus we're just gonna add a little bit of cheese, a lot of bit of cheese. This is some goat's cheese. And this thing is going to be perfect. So this is pretty much done. It thickened up really nicely from that pasta water and it only took like 20, maybe 25 minutes. Quick meal. Mmm. Woo! Hot. Delicious. Flavorful. Packed with goodness. There's protein in there. It's gonna be a great meal when I'm in the studio, working hard. And again, there's a time for perfect execution and proper technique and clearly this is not that. This is a hodgepodge of food coming together into a pasta that will still be delicious, but it's not perfect and I'm fine with it. I'm gonna pack it up and this will be a few meals in the studio. Most of you are probably very familiar with this board. This is the cutting board I've been using in my videos for the past five years. My dad actually makes these cutting boards by gluing together pieces of wood. So all of these colors, these are the natural colors of the wood. And right when I got the studio space, I thought how cool it'd be to blow this up and make it a bigger surface. And I thought originally I could do it for the kitchen island, but you know, that would be a little too busy with all the colors. So I switched my focus to turning this into a desktop, but just adding more colors of wood and making it much bigger. So I took a trip home to make this custom desktop Top. And just like cooking, it all starts with the ingredients. And in this case, we got to go to the lumber yard to pick out all the different colors of wood. So we picked out a variety of lumber and it was all in its raw form. So at the lumber yard, they plane down all of the wood to really reveal its natural beauty. And then they put it through the joiner to give it a nice flat edge. And then once we were back at my dad's workshop, we measured up all of the wood and cut it down to length. For this desk, it was just around 80 inches long. Then we sent all of the wood through the bandsaw to cut it into two inch strips. You can also use a table saw for this as well. And after we had the strips, we ran it through the drum sander just so the surface was nice and smooth for gluing up. You can see the beautiful colors of wood here. I think we had a variety of 10 different types of wood. When it comes to making cutting boards, how do you do, you know, how do you figure out the patterns? With the patterns, I have all the strips cut out and then I just play around with it. I put them down, I see how it looks, I adjust it, and sometimes I'll even leave it overnight. And mm. I'll come down the next day and I'll look at it and say, do I still like this? Ah, so you don't think yeah. we should glue this just yet? Maybe sit on it. Depends if you really, if you really love it and are happy, then you do it but sometimes I wait. Sometimes I'll, I'll come back, I'll look at it another time and just see if I'm real happy with it. Once it's glued, it's, it's done. So this right here is basically a massive cutting board, a few more colors than you know your normal, what, one foot cutting board. So we've got to figure out a pattern. I'm happy I slept on it. I'm really enjoying this new design where you have just chunks of different colors so you really can appreciate the natural wood and just broken up by a few accent pieces like that. Love it. Once I decided on the final design, it was time to glue up the strips of wood. And what we did was glue them up in three different sections so they could each fit through the planer and then glue those three sections together later. You really wanna make sure you load up the wood glue on this step so you have a really nice tight bond. And then you can never have enough clamps. Clamp this thing up good and let that sit overnight until it is formed into one solid piece. 
Now at this point, the surface is very uneven, all the different heights of the wood plus all of the glue. So to make a nice desk surface, we put each piece through the planer and every time you send it through, the planer is gonna take off just a small layer until it is nice and smooth. And then we put it through the drum sander just to finish it off. Now the sections were ready to be joined together, so we hooked up a guide and used a router to create a perfect flat edge so they would line up evenly. And then for some extra support, we drilled in some biscuits with a biscuit cutter and then popped in those biscuits with a bunch of glue and glued up the three pieces to create the full width of the table. Once the glue had dried, we hooked up the metal guide again and used the router to cut a straight edge to create an even line on both sides of the desktop. And then we used a rounded router bit to create a slight bevel on the desktop so it's not a sharp edge. Then all we had to do was finish it up with the orbital sander to give it a beautifully smooth surface. And then it was time to load it in my car and bring it back to the studio. Right, the most exciting time has come. Oh, that was not smart. <laughs> Already got some stain on here. We're ready to stain this baby and bring it to life. To be honest, as it is, it's, it's very beautiful, but the stain, that's what really brings it to life. Thank you fully for hooking up this office space. It's going to be insane. The only thing I'm actually waiting for is the standing desk, which is the most important part to really bring this all together. Um, so once that comes, we can set this baby up. All right. This is what I've been waiting for. Time to assemble my desk. So the cool thing about this specific standing desk from Fully is that you can get it with just the frame only without the desktop. So you can customize the desktop, which is of course what I did here. And you can get it in an extra wide version. My desktop is 78 inches wide. It's insanely big and this will fit up to 80 inches. So it's time to drill into this thing and see what this looks like. Ah. Oh, not a one-man job. Wow, ooh, this rolls nice. <laughs> Love that, I didn't think it would roll so smoothly. So the last thing I have to do to complete the desk setup is to install all of the accessories. Uh, I have a monitor arm, I've got a monitor, I've got a desk lamp, and then I also have some organization accessories because I want this thing to be clean. Clean desktop means clean mind, which means efficient working, and that's what this space is about. Efficient working, really taking these video edits to the next level because I have a beautiful workstation. So here's the final standing desk setup, and this thing exceeded my expectations. I've been loving the motorized standing desk. It's just so incredible to have that adjustability throughout the day. And I also love how this desk is on casters. This gives me the option to seamlessly move the desk around the studio if I wanna change the lighting, or maybe I wanna live stream closer to the kitchen. This really opens up a ton of options, a lot of flexibility. I'm using some red audio engine speed which I really like. They've got great sound and they also match the red tones of the wood, which works nicely. For lighting, I'm using the Beam LED desk lamp from Foley, which gives you the option of different light temperatures as well as controlling the brightness on the lamp. And the Jarvis monitor arm from Foley is really nice and sturdy and has great adjustability as well, so I can change positions throughout the day. And finally, to keep everything nice and tidy, I installed the Jarvis bamboo desk drawer from Foley to give me a a little extra storage to keep my surface nice and clean. 
So I'm actually editing this video right now. It's the first video I've ever edited on this desk setup. And it took me a little bit to get used to, to be honest, with the big screen. I was always editing off the laptop with the adjustable desk, but I am slowly but surely loving this setup. Everything about it, the adjustability, having this screen, put the video on the big screen and the timeline down here, and it has been excellent for editing. So all good things on this desk setup. Woo!